type on the inside of the top. So um, what you can do is if you grab the rotate tool and you start to turn it and you hold the option key, again, we're making a duplicate. But by making the duplicate, um, you can see it looks right, but, but the type's upside down. And so even though we went around this axis point, which is fine, it legibly isn't what we want. So what you do is you click on that tool, uh, the direct select tool actually, and you can grab any one of these things and you can start to pull them. So look, now if I, I grab that little anchor point underneath, now all of a sudden it went from being on the outside to the inside. So let's do it again. Here it is. Here's my direct select tool and I grab this anchor right here and you see that the cursor changed and all I do is just pull it inside. And now all of a sudden the text is on the inside of it. So if I grab that and I grab the scale tool and I hold shift, now and I can eyeball it. I mean if I match the curves to the curves on the other one, um, I make the line up here match the line down there. Now all of a sudden the same anchor point and if I just take the, um, the the dropper tool, I can select that other path and now look, it's actually taking the exact same font size. So I've created this new sort of path here, but um, by, by, um, by clicking on here, I've duplicated it so we have the exact same type. So now if you click off, all of a sudden, wow, these things start to look um, much better. So, and then because this is text, you know, we're not changing it. Sometimes you want to leave a text because maybe you want to change it later. You don't know, you know, the exact wording of the club. Um, you know, you could, you could type anything you want. You could say, uh, you know, um, adult league. I mean, you could take, change it to be whatever you want. And now all of a sudden, um, you know, you have this really full in-depth um, amount of text that is editable and you can select them both. You could sort of space them, make sure that the space on top and bottom is, is, is similar. But because they're based on similar lines and you, you kind of line them up correctly, they're going to feel very similar. Uh, so right now, all of a sudden, now all of a sudden you have this great sort of classic baseball look going on here. Um, and you know, the script here isn't a great choice just because it's on a curve. You will get some weird things, but again, it's editable. So we just click on both. And now you say, you know, it doesn't have, you know, it's not reading exactly how I want it to read. You can go and just pick a nice, simple, um, sans serif typeface and, um, you know, just something basic that uh, reads easier. And then you can play with the type size and you can bring it down. Um, but again, it's editable text. So you can do whatever you want with it. Um, and because you're on a path, that's one of the beauties. Of, of working on paths like this is that it's still editable and you don't have to make a final version that you know is outlined to make it go on a curve like that. Um, but again you can make the same basic changes you would make to a normal uh, um, font where you can just you know change the case to uppercase uh, because in this new font perhaps it's not looking as nice but look how quickly now all of a sudden this starts to um, it starts to come along um, just based on the different fonts. We have a nice, clean-looking baseball uh, logo. And, and you say, all right, that's great, but what about the baseball itself? Again, you don't, have to, uh, you, don't, you don't have to do anything outside of Illustrator in a lot of cases. So let's select that innermost circle. We'll hold Shift. We'll pull it down, uh, just sort of looking. And I'm holding Shift and Option. That's going to give me a duplicate of this black circle. And now I'll just select this. I'll make it white, I'll turn off that stroke, and now I have a shape right away. Um, and, you know, and it's not going to work for everything because, um, because not everything is super simple, but uh, it allows you to kind of create your own style. And, for example, with me, I, I work with a lot of thick strokes, but if you start to create your own style, um, you know, you can start to repetitiously make different things and and it's a nice way to not have to rely on stock photography but uh, I work with very thick strokes and after a while people just start to associate that with me so look let's go to the outline view uh, um, the outline view here's my circle and let's think like a baseball so I'll pull this 
I'll just guesstimate maybe a baseball would be about that wide. Um, we'll go back to regular view and I will change that to the stroke and I'll say uh, just guesstimate mm, let's say seven relatively thick so here's the stroke there's no fill we'll go object path outline stroke and now we have the original ball circle and then we have this circle well if I do object uh, sorry edit copy paste in front now I have this nice template that I can use and I'll select this and then what, there's my divide filter again. Um, to divide tool. I'll click on it and I will ungroup. And if I just click once and hold shift, everything deletes, but now that circle. Now all of a sudden, I have this shape. So, all right, well, that's good for the one side, but what are the other? Well, nice and easy. We go to the reflect tool, hold shift and pull and then hold option to make a duplicate. Now I've duplicated the exact thing, but the exact opposite. So all I have to do now is all I wanted is this black stripe anyway. I hold shift, select the black stripe, hit delete, and now here's my baseball. Nice and simple. And if you want to match it, you could hit uh, object, or sorry, edit, copy, paste in back. And this was seven before, so we'll be consistent. And we'll just uh, we'll make that white circle now black, and we'll add a seven-point stroke. It doesn't seem as thick, so we'll we'll just double it, or we'll eyeball it. Let's do object path, align stroke, expand. So here we got a baseball, and it's not perfect, but for the purposes of what we're doing here, you don't want to be too perfect in a logo. You want to hint at most things. Um, you can't always have things uh, overly detailed, and you really shouldn't have things overly detailed most times, because at small sizes, it loses its uh, weight and it becomes too complex. So we'll just go um, object group, and then if we go back to the, uh, to the outline view, I can see here's the center of these circles, here's the center of this circle. If I click and hold and hold shift, guess what? I don't even need to do anything. They align. And then I just hold the shift, slide it over. When it clicks in, I let go. I go back to my preview, and there you go. There's my baseball. And I said, oh, you know, it looks good. A little off, but well, guess what? Most baseballs are never straight. We'll just uh, we'll go to the rotate tool. We'll just kind of play with it a little bit. And there you go. And if you feel like, hey, it looks like a basketball, you know, when you go in here, you can make the different shapes for the ridges for there. But you get the idea. You can make almost any geometric shape on, on the fly. And if you take enough time, you can get in there and really put a lot of time into your logo. Um, so there you go. With just using basic geometric shapes and strokes, you've now made something um, very easy uh, to put together, and if we look at it, even in the view shape uh, of outline, um, it's very clean. There's not a lot of lines in here, um, which is good. And you could turn these texts into outlines. And now, uh, if you went in, you could actually select everything, which this is another thing that's very important when you're making a logo, is if you select everything and outline it and divide it, you then will get rid of all of these overlapping lines and that way no one can kind of take pieces of your logo and repurpose your artwork because now it'll cut everything out so anything behind say this S uh, is, is gone and that way anything proprietary you've made uh, stays only with you but always make sure that you have many versions just in case you need to go back and only do that on final handoff because uh, never assume you, you're not going to need that shape again I mean there's been times where I've made these these baseballs and I might not realize till I'm doing a website later on that I could reproduce that ball or use it for an icon or something else. So I think um, I think you see how to work with type. I think you see how to get a nice depth of feel in there. And this is a nice, easy way to do something quick and simple and make it look like you spent a heck of a lot of time.